Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Work at Home Rockstar Podcast. Excited for today's episode. She is the founder of Tax Ninja Pro. And what they do is they help people earn six figures in 90 days while working from anywhere in the tax industry. So I'm excited to be rocking out today with Lisa Quinones. Yes. Did I get it right? Yes, you got it right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so uh, are you ready to rock? Can. With that? Yeah, I'm ready to rock. Let's get it. Perfect. So we always start off here on a good note. And second good note, I got your name right. Second yes. good note is tell me a story of success in your business that we can be inspired by. So I am, let's say, it's a, it's a very good success story, but it was very, very emotional. Um, it was the day that I decided to kind of like turn things around. And when I first started my business, I was in the tax industry and I was working on the business. I was a single mom with three kids, three different, you know, schedules, a lot of craziness going on. And it was a particular day that I will never forget. Um, I had worked 18 hours. I had just walked in the door, dropped off all my kids and I get a call that I have to go pick up my son. And I just walked in super excited, super exhausted, tired, a little bit delirious. And I was still in my work uniform because at that time, and we're talking about maybe eight years ago, eight or nine years ago, at that time I was working in my tax business, but at night I was bartending. So you could say I was like living like a double life. So, and then later on after, you know, bartending, I would actually um, work on the business, getting uh, clients and I would get referred to other different clubs. And I actually started, <laughs> no offense, I started doing taxes for strippers in the club. And so I would get home at like six o'clock in the morning. Kids are just getting up. You know, like I said, I had just walked in the door from a very, very long day and night. And so I walk out, I get to the school. And when I get to the school, the, the administrator was there and she's like, oh, like she had this face. And I forgot, I still had my bartending uniform on. And so I had like a little crop top and, you know, the shorts. And if you've ever been to, um, do they have Hooters or that in, in Canada? Yep. We so imagine Hooters. somebody walking in in their Hooters uniform to go pick up their son from school. And my son's like, <sighs> he had like this face like of defeat. Like, why did you come pick me up in your uniform? And that was that moment that like everything clicked and changed for me. Like something's got to give. I have to do something different. I cannot continue to live this life. And I really like spent years trying to, you know, figure it out, create a system that will allow me to live the life I wanted to live. And so I, I say that to say this, that for me, that was a success because it made me change. It made me like, it just like clicked in my head. Like I have to do something different. Now, fast forward 10 years later, you know, I'm doing taxes for millionaires. I'm hanging out with billionaires. Like, you know, I have a picture with like Grant Cardone and like, you know, Elena and everybody like that. And I have like three billionaires around me that inspires me to do more. So that moment was my changing moment. I think that was one of the most successful moments in my life because I had no choice but to change, you know, how I thought about business and, and create something that I can leave to my kids. So. Wow. Wow, that's yeah. a great story. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I tell people that eh? they're like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> "Well, you know what?" And that's what's that's what's crazy is that the the crazier your story is, the 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 crazier the situation that you're in, the better the story is going to be later on, right? Def definitely, I definitely think that you know pressure creates diamonds, and I was definitely under a lot of pressure. And there's a lot of people like that. They're living, you know, the rat race. They're either working or you know, that was my job. My job was bartending and I was trying to build this business. And I, I had to figure out the balance between the two. And I also have three beautiful kids that I was missing out on, you know, not going to my son was in football camp and, you know, my daughter was wanted to do ballet. And I'm like, sorry, honey, I, I can't even take you to your ballet classes. So there was a lot of things that were flipping, you know, slipping through the cracks that I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Like, how can I get be more successful? Right on. Yeah, I, I, I have a similar, like I wanted to be the dad that got to bring my kids to the events during the day or go to the home and school meetings and all that stuff. And I was I was one of the only men that was doing it at the time 15 years ago. Uh, but uh, but it's it it is interesting. The the fuel that fuels the people's stories. Right. Definitely. And, and to piggyback on that, my three kids 
and my older two, you know, there's a big age gap between the older ones and the youngest ones. I never went to any of their school stuff. So when I'm now able to, hey, you know, my daughter has, you know, our daughter just got a principal award and she was the like only two people in the whole school that got picked for the award. And we were able to like push our schedule around and make sure that we were there and we were present. The older ones teased them like, oh, you're the favorite because mom goes to all of your stuff and she never came to none of my stuff. And I'm like, that was 10 years ago, buddy. And we were in a much different financial situation. Yeah, you're creating problems. <laughs> <They're gonna> be <laughs> oh, there's a lot of rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh man, that's great. So now, okay. I mean, along with the good notes comes some bad notes as well. And, you know, yeah. there is a bit of a bad note, you know, in that story as well, but it turned out well. Uh, but I'm wondering if there's anything else you can share with us that we can either avoid or you can share with us how you got out of it. Definitely. So one of our, my lowest points in business was as I was growing, you know, and as we all get to a point where, you know, things are getting better, you're off of the hamster wheel, you're making money, things are great. There's going to be a coming time where people come up to you and say, hey, let's expand this way. Let me help you with this. And it, and, and you're in the like, hey, you know, for my failure was that I didn't do my due diligence. And I ended up having a, a business partner that did bring a lot of value to the business. And it did allow us to expand to four different locations when I only had one. But what I didn't do was you know, how did you run business? How did you do business? What are, are we on the same wavelength as far as our core values and how we want to treat people and how we want to move our business forward? Um, and I literally lost, almost lost everything. I went on vacation thinking this person was great. And all she was doing was doing the groundwork to literally steal the business from underneath me. And by the time I came back, which was about three weeks later, it was the first vacation I had taken in 10 years. So I'm like, oh, I'm off on vacation. My business partner's taking care of everything. I come back and three of our offices were completely empty. Everything was gone. Files, you know, wow. desks. I mean, literally everything. It, it looked like, like you were renting it brand new. There was nothing there. There was nothing even on the walls. Um, the only one she wasn't able to take was my main office, which wasn't part of our partnership, because that was like my brand. So in order to like, just get back everything that I was doing, I had to, I felt like I was starting all over again. And it was heartbreaking. And, you know, I just, I didn't do my due diligence. So if you're in a, in a position, you know, to expand, and you're going to have those people that are going to want to put their input and kind of align themselves with you, make sure you do your due diligence, make sure you look into them, make sure that your core values are aligned because the aftermath was even worse. That wasn't even the worst part of it. The worst part of it was getting the calls from my clients like, oh, so-and-so stole my refund money and um, I haven't heard from your preparer and I haven't heard from your business partner and they have my credit card and now I don't have money in my account and just, it just, unraveled into such a big, big ordeal that took me about two years to recover from. But had I done my due diligence, maybe ask her, you know, any of your other business, why did, did they fail? Why do you want to align yourself with me? Instead of like getting in the hype, like, oh yeah, we can have other locations and we can make more money and help more people. And, you know, my heart was in the right place, but my business mind wasn't there yet. So I do recommend that you just do your due diligence, whether it is a new product or service that you want to add to your business, whether it's a business partner or somebody that wants to market for you, or especially if it sounds too good to be true, you know what I'm saying? Do your due diligence so that you can avoid, you know, any of those pitfalls. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's better to be preventative and be proactive. Wow. Wow. What a story. And yeah, I think what you just said, they're too good to be true because there's always got to be like a win-win, right? And I exactly. think that that's the issue is that a lot of people don't don't take the time to find out what the win is for them. Correct. And and I think that that's uh, like because there she obviously had a game plan. Right? She had an agenda. <laughs> oh yeah, there was there was something that she wanted. There was a win in there for. Her. And you know, if you're asking some somebody, you know, hey, what's in it for you? Why why are you doing this? And they're like, oh, you know, I just want to help you. Well, chances are there's probably something else there that you're exactly, missing. Exactly, exactly. There's no such thing as something so altruistic, you know. No. There's got to be a win-win for both. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I wouldn't even go into business with that person because you know eventually they're gonna, even if that's what they thought, even if they they're coming into business with you because they want to help you, well, eventually that's not going to be enough, and Correct. something's going to have to happen. Either that relationship's going to break or whatever it is. So yeah, I mean, if it, I think that it's always a good practice to go into it knowing exactly what they are getting it because i mean obviously you're gonna have to give something to them as well it's not a partnership if if you're all, the only one getting so uh so yeah that but that's way worse than i would think oh no that's why i said like my first story was like a win for me it got way worse but oh. it you know it, what i feel about failures is i never use the word failure i use the word lesson you always have to look at what you're learning from what you're experiencing in life. If you feel like you're at a low point in your life or a low point in your business, what can you learn from that to one, avoid it in the future and two, make steps to get past it and push past it? Because I did learn a lot, not just in doing my due diligence or, you know, I learned a lot about contracts and business contracts. I, I took that as an opportunity to do a deep dive into what got me there in the first place and to avoid that trap, you know, and to change my mindset and to look at growth in a systematic way, to look at um, business and how it should grow. What are the break points of each business and when I need to actually align myself with somebody that is going to take my brand and my message forward without any, you know, cost to quality or to my initial intent to help people. Yeah, yeah, it's it is funny that when you do talk to people about their failures and their mistakes and all that stuff, it's very rare that someone says I wish I hadn't done that <laughs> because in the end they always end up coming out of it better. They learn something that's, you know, ends up helping them in the future, right? Yeah, definitely. It definitely made me a lot stronger. Um it gave me mental strength. Um and and because I lost everything, there were some hard decisions, you know. Um I actually, just to give you some piggyback and some like real deep, you know, backstory to that is my apartment was due for a a renew of the lease. And I was like, okay, do I renew my lease and spend all this money on rent when right now my business isn't generating income? I only have one office. What am I going to do? I was lucky enough that I had such a big office because we had expanded so quickly that I actually made like a little... um, efficiency apartment in the in the office in the back of the office me and the kids slept in a room for three months you know and and what's funny is that when I got out of that that was my first year that I hit seven figures and we did 1.3 million in sales that year and I was like I did that yes living (laughs) out of my office (laughs) that's crazy so instead of instead of actually moving the home the, the office into the home you go home into the office Correct. Because same. that was pre pandemic. So yeah. I still had a lot of clients coming into the office, they weren't conditioned for zoom, that wasn't a thing. If I would have like, hey, let's, you know, do a meeting on zoom, they're like, no, you know, at that point, a lo- the majority of our clients were coming into the office, and I couldn't afford to lose the office, you know, at that point, I was carrying about 1500 clients. So I didn't want 1500 people knowing where I live. Um, people get a little crazy when it comes to money and their refunds and things like that. And I didn't want anybody like coming to my office, surprising me or, you know, security with my kids. I'm a single mom. Like I, I didn't have at that time, I didn't have anybody to like make me feel secure at home. If I had so many people having access to me, um, they didn't, of course, my clients didn't know that our efficiency was all the way in the back of the office, the way it was set up. You couldn't even see it. You couldn't tell nothing. Um, so it was just a win-win for me to be able to really focus. I was able to work a longer hours and not feel like my kids were not having mom present because if they need to help, you know, my son, he's so funny. He's so personable. He'll come out and he was asking everybody like, Hey, do you want me to make you some coffee? Do you want some cookies? And he would go into our house, into the pantry and get cookies and make coffee. And I'm like, boy, don't do that. So it it was just, you know, bonding and it let me really focus on growing my business. And we were able to hit seven figures in, I think we did it in the first 50 days. Like I was working like crazy and not knowing what the outcome was going to be. I just wanted to get out of that situation. 
Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about the fans then. So how yes. do you, how do you get people into your business? How, how do you get uh, fans? So the way that we get people into our, what I call our community um, is we offer a lot of value and a lot of free opportunities to learn. Um, we have a weekly Wednesday webinar that I show clients that it is possible to make seven figures in the tax industry, that it is possible to work from anywhere. Um, and we go over a couple of you know, different strategies that we do to do that. But we teach them the number one marketing strategy that we use to grow six and seven figure tax businesses. So that's every Wednesday. And then on Saturday, I have a free open Zoom call for tax preparers that may not be getting the support. They might be working, you know, in another office. They work at H&R Blog, Liberty Tax and places like that that don't allow them to grow. And that's more like a learning one-on-one -on -one situation where they'll jump into the Zoom call and say, hey, Lisa, I have this situation with a client and I really don't know where to start or what to look for or what to ask. And I'm like, okay, share your screen. Let's take a look. Maybe you might want to look at this or you might, you know, it's a, it's a coaching and learning platform. And from there, they're like, I want more. Do you work with people like me? I'm like, yes, I work with tax professionals like you every day. And let's book a one-on-one. -on -one. And so we transition from a learning and adding value type webinar into more of a sales um, conversation. Wow. Yeah. So, so you're basically giving free information and that allows people to get to know you a little bit better and Correct. decide whether you're aligning with them or not, I guess. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Deciding if, if we're a good fit, you know, if it's something that they see they're going to use or that they need more access to because we have our virtual program, which is all self-paced, but we also have a full service coaching and consulting program um, depending on which route they want to take. And so those two free webinars allows them to not only get information, um, but also sees, you know, where can Lisa fit into my idea for my perfect business? So how do you get the word out about the, the free webinars? So we actually do um, ads on Facebook and Instagram, and we run them every week. We also do them on Eventbrite. So it has a lot of good SEO. Uh, we have several landing pages and lead magnets that kind of gets them in through one point or another and just works through that whole community that we have for our tax professionals. Right on. And how do you target those ads? Like, uh, do you have sort of... So now I have a team before I would go into Facebook groups and do prospecting and, you know, adding that same value into a lot of Facebook groups. Um, I do a lot of public speaking as well. Speaking is one of those tools that a lot of, a lot of people don't use. And then, um, but it allows you to have your ideal client all in one room. So a lot of, you know, I, I go to a lot of conventions and conferences for small business or, you know, women in business or women, you know, business opportunities, chamber of commerce, it's all about networking as well. So we have many different ways to, to get lead generation. Love it. Love it. Hey, Rockstar. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Work at Home Rockstar podcast. If you didn't know already, my business is Creative Crew Agency. We build websites. Now, let's talk about your website for a minute. Most people realize that at this point, day and age, we need a website, but we don't really know what the website is supposed to do. And sometimes you'll just go and build a website for the sake of building a website. What I do is I make sure that your website actually accomplishes a goal. Now there are three main goals to most websites. Number one is to provide information and build credibility. Number two is to schedule some sort of appointment and get them on, onto a sales call. Number three is to sell something like an e-commerce site. Now, uh, when you're setting your website, you have to be very mindful that the visitor doesn't know what to do. And so you have to provide them with a roadmap that leads them down a path to wherever you want them to go. On my website, I want them to be on a free consultation. So that's why when you go to creativecrewagency.com, you'll see information about scheduling a free consultation. Now for you though, I'm going to provide you with an extra link so that you can get your free website audit. Go to creativecrewagency.com forward slash free website audit and schedule an audit with me and I'll go through your website live and determine what we can do to improve your conversions and make sure that you're getting the business from your website. Go to creativecrewagency.com and we'll see you there. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the tools and the instruments. So what kinds of tools do you use to get success in your business? So 
I see that question as like, it has two different answers. You know, uh, for those that are solopreneurs, there's gonna be two different things that you need. You need internal tools. Um, and one of the things that I really talk about with our mentees is the internal tools that you're gonna need to persevere. You and I both know that business is not for the faint of heart. You have to have will. You have to have grit. You have to have passion. You, ha you have to be coachable because there's always a learning experience in business. And you want to get aligned with somebody that has done it before and can teach you those internal tools that you're going to need. But you need those first to even consider yourself an entrepreneur. And then you have business tools. Um, as we grow our business, there's different breakpoints where you're going to need different tools for success. But, you know, using social media and learning what works in social media and what doesn't, being consistent, um, having sales, you know, sales skills and marketing skills. Those are some of the big things that allows us to have success, because if people don't know who you are and what you do, you're never going to have any clients. You're never going to sell your business or your products. So you really have to market, 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 get really good and get Un get comfortable with being uncomfortable so that you can be successful in business. And then there's also like mechanic tools, like, you know, softwares and things like that, but that's going to be specific to each business. Um, but for me, the tools of success are my internal tools that keep me pushing forward. And in my business is social media, marketing, number one, marketing, um, having strong sales skills, and as I grew, having a good team, because I would not be here where I'm at today without an actual team that, you know, continues to generate income, whether I'm in the business or not, and allows me to be here with you today. Right on. So now you'd mentioned that you need to be coachable. So I'm yes. wondering about that. Like, what, you know, how do you approach, uh, you know, learning from other people? Like, do you hire coaches? Do you, mm -hmm. you know, attend masterminds? Like, what, what's your process for getting that information? So I miss myself am a coach, but I also have a coach. Um, and when we talked about like that moment where things clicked, what allowed me to become successful and really change my business around was I aligned myself with someone who has the life that I wanted, who created the life that I wanted, not only in business, but in the personal sense as well. And one of, you know, my coach is Grant Cardone and Elena Cardone. They are billionaires. They have an amazing, um, relationship with themselves, their partners, they talk about, you know, tech, 10xing your life is not just, you know, like a mantra. It's actually a way of life. And when I saw that, I got hooked and was able to really, really grow my business, not with not just myself, you know, now fast, you know, fast forward those 10 years, I'm not a single mom of three, I'm a married mom of six. And, you know, my husband and I have a really busy schedule, but we run our business together, our, our he had his own business. I had my own business and they really complement each other. But we both have a coach that we see ourselves learning from all the time. You have to be able to learn. I mean, there's no way that I can get to the next level without actually really seeing it, that it's done and having the steps reverse engineering it on how to get it done. And my coach gives me all the tools. And it's like, okay, here, here's a workshop. Let's, you know, break this down. You want to be better in sales. Let's do this. There's always things that you can tweak that will take you to the next level. And now all of our offices are all million dollar earners in their own right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our, our goal for this year is to 10x what we've already done, but I wouldn't be able to do that if my coach hadn't already done that, you know? Yeah. Do you, does your, your husband's have the same coach? We have two different coaches, but within the same group, um, because we run different aspects of the business, I deal with the tax aspect of the business and growing that and in, you know, that coaching program. And he is our credit specialist. He does, he deals with, you know, credit repair, business credit, business funding. They're very complimentary, but different languages. So we each have our own separate coach for the business but we also come together as a couple to make sure that our goals and our business goals are aligned and that we're hitting those goals. That's amazing. And so what do you think holds people back from getting a coach? Honestly, I think there is a stigma, um, you know, of I can do this on my own. I want to do this on my own, which is great. 
but you know, you, you're not going to be able to really grow on your own, especially if you go from a corporate mindset where you're just clocking in and clocking out because I, I went through the same thing. It's all about mindset to answer that question in like a short form. It's all, all about mindset. Um, we're taught to be independent in our society. We're taught to be self-sufficient in our society. And in reality, you do need a coach. If you look at sports, you look at football, everyone has a coach and why it's not necessarily because the coach is the athlete or they're better at football than anybody else. It's because it holds you accountable. You know, this is what you want to grow into. Let's you it's accountability and it's structure that a lot of um, business owners and solopreneurs lack. So it, what holds them back is the mindset. You know, if LeBron James has a coach, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do find it very, weird <laughs> really when you think about it because we're you know we we know that successful people have coaches we know that successful athletes have coaches we know all these things but for some reason and 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 even like the independence like is anybody really independent i mean you you ask you know your spouse for help you ask your kids yeah. for help you ask your friends for help right i don't like it's just it's so weird how we have this idea that we're not allowed to pay for a coach or we're not supposed to hire even a, a therapist. Like there's so many different types of things that we're, you know, discouraged from hiring because it makes us think that we're weak. Correct. But the people who are strong all do it. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Weird? And and that was my, you know, one of my things that I did when I, I decided I made that decision, like I need to be more successful is I literally chose two people to emulate and I read all their books and I read all of their things. And I look and I do a, a research analysis on their companies. And I chose Warren Buffett and Grant Cardone. They're both billionaires. Um, you know, I really resonate with Grant Cardone because he came from nothing. Um, he's lost everything several times he's had you know a lot of difficulties he was a drug addict and that just really resonates with me because my family came from very humble beginnings we were very very poor coming up and a lot of my family still has that poor and scarcity mindset and you know even my mom was struggling up to a certain point financially even in, in her adult life and so that track the word track and who where he came from really resonated with me but they're billionaires. So if he came from nothing and I come from nothing, I can get to a billionaire. You know, it, that's not the immediate goal, but that's definitely that long-term goal that I want because that's where you create wealth and generational wealth and leaving things for my six children. Like that's a lot of kids to put through college, you know? So I chose two coaches that I would like. Um, unfortunately, Warren Buffett does not have a coaching program that I can afford at this time, uh -huh. but you know, I still read and absorb everything that they've done. And, and I really did a deep dive into how they live their lives and, you know, their mindset and their money mindset. That's a big, huge thing in being successful is looking at the things you need to change of how you view money and how you see money and allow yourself to learn from them. Once you learn from the coach that you want, go after it. Like, even if it's somebody who's not a coach and it's somebody that, you know, and they're successful, haggle them until they have no choice, but to say, okay, I will coach you. Like find yourself a coach, no matter who it is. But, you know, two things that I do suggest is one research them and make sure that they have attained the success that you want. And then two, like ask them, what's the most amount of money you've ever made. If their answer is something that you want to do, then that's a coach that you should learn from and don't stop until they say yes. And I would probably add another one to that is that um, I, I think it probably needs to be somebody who's earned that success in the near like time, like maybe not someone who, yeah. you know, is generational money that you know yeah, made it exactly. years and years ago. Cause the world does change quite quickly. And so someone who's like, you know, still selling the whole thing of, you know, buy billboards, billboards work, like, 
Well, <laughs> if billboards don't work, I, I think things I used have, to have two of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, maybe someone who is like running a program that's helping people now rather right. than maybe, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, but you yeah. hit the nail on the head. Correct. But, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, you're, I mean, I, I definitely think that you're quite inspirational as well from the way Thank that you're, you. you're speaking. So that's good. Uh, speaking of which, it is your guest solo. So tell me what's yeah. exciting in your business right now. So right now we just launched our six figure accelerator program, which allows anybody who has zero to no um, experience in the tax industry, create a six figure income in 90 days. Um, and so we just launched that. We started the webinars a couple of weeks ago and we were able to um, enroll about 32 people last week. And I'm really, really excited for them because it's a, you know, they're brand new to it. They have that imposter syndrome, like, how am I supposed to do this? And so we're able to help them and get them more confidence. And everyone in our program already has paying clients right now. So even though we're not technically in tax season, um, they're already generating income. Um, when we launched, like did like a mini launch, you know, like a beta test last year, we enrolled five mentees and they all did six figures. Um, one of my favorite success stories is Miss Janita, who um, is was working in a church and making a little bit of money, not too much. And she was able to to date. She has made five hundred eighty seven thousand dollars. And last year, she did not have any experience whatsoever with marketing or sales or even taxes. She had no idea what to do. She just knew she wanted to help people. And, you know, somebody had recommended the program. She came in through the webinar and she was really, really excited. So this year we did a full rollout um, and that program will allow anybody to create a six figure income working from anywhere, anytime. So I'm really, really excited about our program and, you know, tax season's right around the corner. So, you know, that's what's happening. <laughs> well, well, yeah, well, this episode is going to go live uh, in December. So yeah, no, so, that's uh, perfect. So what, what am I we're saying? 90 days. Isn't that, doesn't that take us to March? When's tax season? So tax season officially opens up January 5th. Okay. Um, the IRS opens up January 23rd. So from January 23rd to about April 15th is that three month, 90 day mark. Um, and it allows them to make as much money as possible. But if, you know, this airs in December, so you have more than a month to really get started. And that's more than enough time to get all of your training, all of your experience. And we have that support that if you have something that you don't know how to do, jump in on a Saturday Zoom call and we'll help you. We have EAs and CPAs on staff. I usually run the Saturday one because that's like my baby. Like this is my my baby program. So I'm mm -hmm. very, very hands-on with it. Um, and there's so much support, not just from myself, but from our community that we've that we've created that everybody just wants to help everybody win. Um, one of the other things that I see in business in general, no matter what industry it is, is that when you have somebody new into the industry, it's like, okay, let's push them out because they're going to take over my market share. That's not true in our community because there's so many people, millions of people that we can service and we can do all 50 states. We can do people outside, you know, like I said, expat taxes. There's just so much opportunity that instead of pushing you out, we want to enfold you and welcome you in and, and give you all the support that you need. Love it. So now what would be like the ideal person that would be benefit that would benefit from this program? Anyone that is broke, <laughs> sick and tired of working a nine to five, has no time, um, has no free time, wants to live a different life and wants to create a business around their lifestyle versus, you know, being stuck working in somewhere that would be ideal because they're going to have that will and that perseverance and, you know, that hustle to get out and break out that that would be the ideal person for this program. So maybe not completely broke because they're going to have to afford the program. Well, the I mean, place. yeah, but I mean, like they're, they're broke as far as like, you know, their spirit is broken, not yeah. necessarily like they don't have any money, obviously, but like their spirit is broken and, 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 you know, or they might have gotten laid off and they're like, oh my God, what do I do now? And, you know, that, that broken feeling that you need some hope to get out of it. This is something that is step-by-step step, color by numbers and gets you to a successful career. 
Yeah, yeah. So basically, they uh, might be going paycheck to paycheck, you know, that kind of person that is ready. They're they're ready. Uh, you know, they're they're at the point now where, you know, they can't keep doing this forever. Right. Correct. So they need yeah. to do something different. Right. Definitely. Definitely. And and I've been there, you know, I've definitely been there. And most yep. of my mentees have been there. Um, some of them are still working. And once they realize um, that they've made enough money that they can actually leave their job. They're like super surprised. Like, oh my God, I've only been in the program for 30 days and I'm like done already. So we, you know, we have, we have those aha moments where, you know, we talk about their 90 day action plan and I want to make this amount of money. And I'm like, you're thinking too small. Do you know that you can exponentially grow this? We just had one young lady who quit her job after being in the program for three weeks because she made $25,000 in the first three weeks. Wow. And she's like, that's how much I make in the entire year at her job. Yeah. Works at Target. And so she went into Target that day when we ran her report, her monthly report. And she's like, yep, I quit my job because I don't need it anymore. I completely absorbed all of the income that I would have made in one year in three weeks. Let's go. Let's do it. And, you know, her motivation, her will was just there. And, and that's what gets me really, really excited is to see those aha moments that like, oh my God, I've made all this money already. Like I can quit my job. I, I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. I can think about other things. I'm going on a vacation, but I'm still working, which is great. You know, that's great for me. That makes my spiritual glass grow yeah. with more. Yeah. <laughs> so how do we find out more? So um, this Saturday, we actually have a free training on sales and marketing in the tax industry. And every Wednesday we have an intro training, but the best way to really, really get to know more and ask me, you know, as many questions as possible is to book an accelerator call with me. Um, I'll give you the, the link so that they can book that call. Um, they can directly access and we can spend 30 minutes really breaking down, you know, all of their, their goals, their aspirations and seeing if we're a good fit. And if this is the road that is, you know, for them. Okay, so wherever you're listening to this, there's going to be show notes. You'll be able to click the link in the show notes to get to uh, some more information on this, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for rocking out with me today, Lisa. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. I, this was really, really exciting. I really, really like that. Thank you, Tim, for having me here on your podcast. No problem. And to the listeners, make sure you subscribe, rate, and comment. And we'll see you next time on the Work at Home Rockstar Podcast.